In this episode, we're going to talk about my top five favorite race archetypes in sci-fi fantasy. Huzzah! My name is Aiden, and this is Author Quest. Thank you so much for joining me as we talk about magical race archetypes in sci-fi fantasy. Disclaimer, this list isn't exhaustive. These are my current favorites. There's plenty more out there, and I'd love to hear what uh, you think and what your favorites are as well. Let's get started. Number one, Mountain Dwellers. Mountain Dwellers are a staple of most fantasy worlds because mountains themselves are a common and essential landscape. They often represent the toughest part of the quest. What's appealing about Mountain Dwellers is their willingness not only to adapt to these harsh conditions, but to thrive in them. When we encounter Mountain Dwellers, they often appear in the story when the hero is starting to find their quest too impossible to complete. If the Mountain Dwellers are on the hero's side, they typically bolster the hero's resolve. If the Mountain Dwellers are not on the hero's side, they make for a great obstacle for the hero to overcome. And when they overcome the impossible obstacle in impossible circumstances, it makes the rest of their quest seem manageable. Great examples of this are dwarves from the Inheritance Cycle, dragons and orcs from almost any mythology, the Badgermolds from Avatar The Last Airbender, and the Dead Men of Dunharo from Lord of the Rings. Number 2. Little Geniuses Little Geniuses are one of my favorites because they give whichever side they're on the upper hand. Unlike Mountain Dwellers, Little Geniuses are not tied to any one biome. They are smart, witty, and even though they are small in stature, they're great in spirit and ingenuity. In most stories they appear in, they make possible what would normally be impossible for the heroes, or vice versa, they make what would normally be possible, impossible. Little geniuses oftentimes form close-knit communities that rely heavily on each other's support, legacy, and tradition. Great examples of little geniuses are Santa's elves, Ewoks and Astromechs from Star Wars, the LGMs from Buzz Lightyear Star Command, and the Werecats from Aragon. A great story arc for a character is when they come from a little genius society and try to lone wolf it against the grain of their people. They are expelled because of their rebellion, but are welcomed back in open arms when they realize the hero fulfilled a need they didn't know they had. Like Hermie from the classic stop-motion children's movie Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, who wanted to be a dentist, not a toy maker. Number 3. The Unseen The Unseen is a racial archetype that is compelling to many because it can often be relatable to readers who may also feel unseen. Whether by magical or societal means, this race of unseen people comes in two types. One, they are blissfully happy and content with their invisibility because they are left alone to go about their business. These happy ones often come in large communities like the hobbits of the Shire. Two, they are jaded and angry with the world because of their unseen nature. These are often lone wolves who are quick to lash out. Great examples of these are dark elves from Dungeons and Dragons, the Boneless from Doctor Who, and the Duffelpuds from the Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Number 4, The Last of Their Kind The quick and easy way to make a character unique is to make them the last of their kind. This archetype has been very common since the 80s, and is likable because it scratches that itch in the back of the reader's mind that they too are one of a kind. Reading is a great escape for adults and children alike. Sadly, many of us feel undervalued too often, this popular archetype can make people feel valued if they too feel like the last of their kind. The great desire of the last ones is to be reunited with their kind, to find community. Whether they find more of their race or perhaps an adoptive family of friends, they commonly value family and community above all else because they know what life is like without them. A great way to flip this archetype on its head is to make the last one evil, perhaps a hunter who killed the rest of their kind. Great examples of the last of their kind is Saphira from the Inheritance Cycle, Zeb from Star Wars Rebels, Luke Skywalker, also from Star Wars, and Briaris from the Percy Jackson series. Before we get to our last race, I want you all to check out my brother's channel, Writing Quest. Give him a like and let him know I sent you. Number 5, Too Big for Doors. This is a personal favorite of mine. The Too Big for Doors race archetype is exactly as it sounds. This race of people is too big for the doors of normal society. This race of people is usually small and scattered. They wander around without a nation. They are often found on the fringes of society where they are accepted into small groups or left alone as outcasts. 
My favorite attribute of this race archetype is their desire to fit in despite the challenges of their size. Oftentimes they learn that their size isn't a flaw, but a benefit. Another word for these would be gentle giants. Great examples of these gentle giants are the Iron Giant from the 1999 movie The Iron Giant, Chewbacca from Star Wars, Hagrid from Harry Potter, Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender, and Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy. There you go, my top five favorite race archetypes from sci-fi fantasy. Let me know what your favorite race archetypes are down in the comments. See you next time. Huzzah!